Welcome to another Cleverly Changing Podcast. Today we are talking about stress. So we invite you to share this podcast with your friends and your neighbors and your coworkers. Even if you are not a homeschool parent, this conversation can be helpful to you because everybody in the world experiences stress of some sort. And so today we're talking about different tools and tricks to help you keep going, even in spite of stress that you may be living with. Of course, some stress is good and it helps to motivate us, but at other times it can feel overwhelming. So before we get into the conversation, I wanted to share a Rwandan proverb with you. And the proverb states, if you are building a house and a nail breaks, do you stop building or do you change the nail? Basically, it is saying that you have to keep going. So here's the thing. In our homeschools, in our lives, just as a parent, things will go wrong and you will face stress. Wherever you are, if you're on a job, regardless, you are going to face stress in your life. So it is not okay to just give up. You have to keep going. You may have to change some things. You may have to try something new, but you should keep going. And so in our conversation today, we're going to give you some tools to help you do that very thing. Keep going even during the stressful times. Thanks for listening. And if you have any show topics, please leave them in the Um, You can send me an email at cleverlychanging at gmail.com. We love to hear from you guys and we want you to share it with other people so they know about our our podcast. It's now time for the word of the episode. Tulia, Tulia, Utakalo, Utalipata. It means just be cool. You'll get what you want. This reassuring statement is one that can help us through many of our stressful situations. Sometimes you just have to sit still. Other times you have to get moving. But if you're cool, you'll get what you want. This is Cleverly Poachers Kids. talk to kids about different topics. Today we're here with my daughters and we're talking about stress. I want to hear from them about what kids can do when they are stressed and if there is good and bad stress. So girls, can you talk to me a little bit about stress? Can you give me your definition of stress? Um... Mm. I mean, procrastination could be good sometimes, like when you're trying to finish a test, wait till the last second, and then get it all done, but that's not good for you, so I don't know. So if you're waiting until the last Mm. minute, you might not do so well because you're super pressured, so it's better not to procrastinate for a test, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I feel like Leah's stressing about her answer. Thank you. Okay. So can you give us, is there good stress and bad stress? Yes. So what are some things that would be considered good stress? Um. I, yeah, Maya, go ahead. Um, the stress that motivates you to um, do, do better and power through. Okay. Yes. So stress can be a motivator. And when someone is stressed, it's an uncomfortable feeling usual. Usually. What are some ways that kids can get past that feeling, that uncomfortable sweatiness, unsure? So like if you're meeting someone new, going to a new school, you can feel a bit stressed. You may get sweaty. You may be a little bit afraid. 
You may have some anxiety related to that. But there are definitely different things that you can do to better cope with stress. In my eyes, stress and anxiety are connected. So, okay. She said that stress and anxiety are connected. So what can, what can kids do? I don't know. So if it's related to a test, should they procrastinate and wait to the last minute? Procrastination can sometimes help, but as probably the majority of people would say, study for the test. How how soon? How soon should they study? As soon as you get the message. Okay. All right. So when you find out that you're going to have a test, start immediately studying for it. Yes. And um, on the day of the test, make sure that you feel that you um, are hopefully not stressed like usual and that you ate an energizing breakfast because that. Yeah. So a healthy breakfast can help you cope with stress better. Getting a good night's rest can help you help you cope with stress better. Yes. What else? Um, you were very cheerful about this. What about talking about it? Because all stress isn't test related. Sometimes That's it can true. be other things that can stress you out. It can be something someone said, something someone did. Something you did. Right, it could be something your parents did. So one thing that you can do is talk talk about it by addressing it, by letting someone else know how you feel about it. That tends to help. What else can you do? Well, if you really don't really feel like talking about it to anyone else, feeling like they won't understand or something, hmm, I don't actually know. You can what go about over it in your head, but... you can go over it in your head, but what about writing it down? You think you can you think that would be helpful? I don't know. So yeah, that is one way that you can deal with it. If you don't want to verbally talk about it to someone, you can write it down and get it out. So I I blog and so I write out my feelings and that tends to help me feel better. So that's one way that I cope with stress. Another thing that you can do is we talked about eating right and we talked about talking about it, but you can also exercise. Exercise helps with stress. So if, you know, someone did something or you're, you know, you have anxiety about something, exercising and getting your mind off of it can also help. Yes. That's what help. I think. Well, it kind of would in the sense that doing fun stuff would help, but. So you can you can redirect your oh. energy by mm-hmm. doing something fun. Mm-hmm. That's that's cool. You can I like fun. that you said that. Mm-hmm. What were you gonna say? You can also redirect your energy by like um. Hmm. Taking your anger not necessarily out on someone else, but. I don't know, an object? Punching bag? I don't know. Oh, like a stress ball? Yes. Using a stress ball or something else. Like if you had one of the um, boxing punching bags, if you were using that to release stress, that would be okay. And, and not releasing it on a person. So those are just some tools that students can use to help with stress. Do you think homeschool is stressful in some ways? Yes. So what way is homeschool stressful? Hmm. Well, having to get all your work done by a certain time, your parents um, telling you that you need to get work done, and constantly drilling it into you, even though you technically know, not really having any time to do anything else. So sometimes you feel like you have a lot of work to do. Yes, and you're and that can be sh- and, and you're procrastinating, but that can be stressful. Okay, so in the future, I definitely encourage you girls to use some of these tips to handle stress. All right, welcome.
Welcome to another Cleverly Changing podcast where we discuss life, culture, and everything in between from a homeschool perspective. So today we are talking about a new topic, one that every homeschool family will eventually encounter, and that is what to do when you're facing extreme stressful times. When times are extremely stressful, it can be daunting. And we want to talk about some things that you can do to help reduce that stress when life happens. So we're going to get into the conversation today. I'm Elle. And I'm Miriam. And we are excited to have this conversation with you today. So can you kind of start us off, Miriam, with um, just kind of maybe a brief scenario and we can take it from there. Um, you know, stress can be so many different things, right? It could be your best friend from ages ago that you haven't seen in a while coming to visit. It could be in-laws coming into town. It could be your basement flooding. It could be any number of things. Even if it is a happy time, it still is a strain on your body so it stress and i i tend to have more stress when i have lots of work to do um so let's see uh maybe a couple of weeks ago i work from home so a couple of weeks ago I got a large volume of articles to write. And the quota is about two articles a day. The articles range quite a bit. And so I don't always know what I'm talking about. So it takes some research to figure out up from down. But then of course, there are my four children and I have to attend to their needs and their educational needs and still have time to go to the bathroom, eat something, all of that. And so there's always interruptions and I get a little, a lot, flustered when I have, when I feel overwhelmed, it's just too much. So I guess that would be the scenario that comes to mind first. You know, when you, the children wanna go out and play, but you gotta sit here and do this. And you know, there's some laundry that's supposed to be getting folded. And you're looking at the clock and you say, oh, it's almost lunchtime. I think I should get started on that too. But wait, I'm on a roll here. I finally got it. <laughs> it's always something. My son go to the bathroom, mom, wipe my butt. <laughs> and you're like, ah. Every time you have a moment and you, it's, that would be my most recent stress out say. Would you care to share your stressful scenario? So, so yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to share my stressful scenario, but I wanted to just say that the thing about homeschooling is that you are always on. So there's never really time where you can really take a true break. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like a nine to five job where you can leave some part of that work at work is something that kind of is interwoven in your life at all times. So if you, you know, because we homeschool often from our, our homes, the added stress is you, you know, you have to still do your daily task and, you know, you have to get those things done while still educating your children at the same time. And so that right. can 
kind of throw something into the mix where you have to really be on top of things to be able to handle the stress that comes along with it. So there is no homeschool that is completely stress-free. It's just, it doesn't exist. So what we want to do, we want to share our real scenarios, real situations that have really happened to us. <laughs> and we want to share our tools of how we've coped. Um, this past week, this is really a fresh topic for me. This past week, um, actually, it's been, <laughs> it's two been weeks. man, like 10 days, almost two weeks. Um, our, we woke up one morning and somehow my husband recognized that the hot water wasn't working and he thought it was weird. So he went down to check the water heater to check the tank and he found out that our basement had flooded. Our hot water heater had cracked and had flooded our basement and it really stung and hurt because um, we had just finished our basement where we had an entertainment room and we had put carpet down. Um, we did carpet. I know it's not really ideal for the basement because it's easier to replace. We did have extra hardwood to put down there, but we really wanted it to be more soundproof and we wanted to be able to, um, to replace it easily. But because we had just put it down like a couple months ago, we weren't thinking we would need to replace it that soon. That definitely wasn't something um, on our mind. But anyway, so he went down there and he saw that the, um, the basement was flooding. So we are doers. <laughs> we quickly get into action and try to solve the problem. So he pulled up all the flooring um, so that we could, um, it wasn't, the entertainment room wasn't, completely flooded, but half of it had flooded. So we were able to pull up the flooring and, um, you know, put it out in the sun. So it's a good thing that it happened now and not in the winter or during like a really rainy season. So yeah. um, we do have some warmer days where we could dry, dry things out. But um, it was active. We actually have a home warranty that really complicates things. And so we had to put in a claim and when we put in the claim, they didn't come out until several days later in order to diagnose the problem. Once they diagnose the problem, then they order the parts to have it fixed. And it's supposed to be an emergency situation that's supposed to be handled in 24 to 48 hours. But like I just said, it's been almost two weeks. So, um, you know, to say that I've been stressed is really an understatement, but mm -hmm. I try to remain calm. Like <laughs> you did an excellent job because when you act like you're just overwhelmed, you know, your children act overwhelmed. So yeah. you got to keep your cool so that the household will also be cool. And so I definitely was annoyed. I'm not even going to lie, but because we're, we're authentic on this podcast we like to be real and so i was i was angry because i felt like it needed to be handled quickly by the contractors and it wasn't and no matter how much i called to stay on top of people how i how many times i tried to get managers involved and take care of it it just wasn't working <laughs> it wasn't fixing itself out and so here I have, you know, it's, we have a family of four and we weren't able to shower. We were having to boil water and, you know, some people know about that. Like we were, we were trying to handle things as best as possible, but it was, it was just becoming overwhelming. And I, I gotta be honest with you. So from a homeschool perspective, I, you know, I, I was very lenient, you know, I was like, I can try to be on my kids and try to get them to do work, but they're, they're not even focusing. So we did a little bit of work. Like I, I did extra, um, you know, problems here or there, but it was not the rigorous, you know, daily schooling that we normally do. I said, we gotta, we gotta take a break. And, um, you know, it wasn't a full break cause we we're about to, have to do our homeschool um, review, but it was a little bit more lenient just because, you know, if you try to just go through things like nothing is wrong, 
you tend to make yourself even more stressed. <laughs> so, um, so taking a little bit of a break gave me more flexibility to handle things because I would have to make follow-up calls and, and just really be on top of the warranty and also the contractors. And so, um, so what ends up happening is my, my plan of action when I woke up in the mornings was take a dip, deep breath and look on the bright side. It could be worse. You know, it could have been so bad where, you know, we weren't able to, um, you know, everything could have been destroyed, but it wasn't like that. And, you know, we definitely, my husband was very um, helpful um, in trying to, you know, take action and talk to the contractors as well. So we had to work together. We had to really get in team mode and um, work together. So what I realized is that the best thing to do is to delegate when you can. So there were some calls that I couldn't make because I needed to tend to the children. And I was able to delegate that to him. So that would be when you're in a stressful situation, delegating would be my first plan of action. Do you find that when you're in a stressful situation, Miriam, that delegating is like one of the first things that you do to see what you can take off your plate? Um, it's in the top three. I lean a little heavier, heavily, excuse me. I lean a little more heavily on my oldest daughter because my husband's not at home. Um, but when he does come home, he's looking at me like, wait, I just got here. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, I know, but I really need you to please. And he says, okay. And he helps me out. Um, I think that, you know, kind of handing out the task does make things a lot easier. I think that as a parent, I often do everything myself or try to do everything myself because especially when it comes to like cleaning up because Far too often, if I ask the children to do it, I still have to do it. Now, I understand that, of course, how else are they going to learn and figure out how to do X, Y, and Z? But oftentimes, I just, if I have to come back in here and do it, then, and do it as if nothing has been done, <laughs> It just kind of seems pointless to me. I might as well just do it in the first place. And then I could have them do something else. So I have that problem, but I have been trying to be more flexible with that and allow them to do more things. Let me say allow. But they're Make young. So I think that's that's <laughs> why it's such a... Uh, um, a debate within yourself because they're not like my kids are older, like your oldest. And so they can take on more responsibilities. Yeah. So like when the hot water heater was out, you know, the dirty clothes were piling up and we had to go to the laundromat. I needed help. Like there were tons of loads of clothes. I, I wasn't able to do all those clothes on my own. So um, my kids went to the laundromat for the first time and <laughs> You know, I didn't even remember how to use the laundromats, washer, and dryers. I had to ask somebody. Like, sure, I was reading it, but I was just like, look, I need to hurry up and get this done. So I asked for some help. And the laundromats have changed <laughs> since we've really had to use them. They've got these super machines and special quarter inputs, and you got to put your uh, detergents in specific little compartments and things. Yeah. It's not like it used to be with your old school top loading washer, throw it in there. It wasn't like that at all. And I was looking at the washer and he was like 34. It took, th it, the front of it said 34 quarters. And I was like, mm -hmm. what? That's why I asked. Cause I was like, does that mean I have to put 34 quarters in this washer? He was like, yeah. When yeah. you use a triple loader. Uh-huh. 
So I, yeah, so I needed some help because I was not used to a washer costing 34 quarters. <laughs> uh, they got to make that money. Yep. So, um, so that was one opportunity where I was able to delegate and my kids really helped me. Um, they, we had already pre-sorted the clothes and they each had some loads that they put in the washer. They had their quarters, they had their soap. So we each, we, we divided that stuff up and we each, um, washed. And then, um, after that, I let them go to the car and um, I did the drying and then they helped me um, take them out and we put everything away separately. So yeah, delegating can be helpful and it's more helpful when the kids are older. If they're very young, they're not so self-sufficient. So it does make it a little bit more um, challenging. A little more difficult, yeah. Because the younger ones, like my youngest, he actually does more to help than the two older so he'll see me <laughs> on the floor trying to pick up the legos that somebody just carelessly tossed around or picking up all the crayons and colored pencils from the coloring episode that just went down and he'll come and he'll stop me and he'll start putting things away and he's upset that i'm putting it away so now he's like, let me do this, mom. And he's trying to put the stuff away. And I say, oh, my baby loves me. What about the rest of y'all? Come on. And they look at me and laugh because they think it's funny. But they don't know. I would so appreciate the assistance. And then sometimes, you know how it is. You ask them, I don't No, that's boring. Right. It comes with the territory, I know. But yeah, I think delegating is an excellent uh, um, option, way to. So what's your next plan of action after? My next plan, I, I like to take a moment to myself. Yeah. So because I have younger children, that means lots of whining. And the whining can really drive me mad. Uh, my youngest son, he does, he'll be two in a couple of weeks. He does a lot of whining. Um, mostly because he wants me to hold him all the time. And I will admit, it is my fault that he expects me to hold him all the time. But in my defense, I had to keep him close when he was fresh baby shucks through all of infancy because his older brother he's a very strong little guy he's really strong and he would always try to take his baby brother and he would try to pick him up he would want to hold him and if he got to that baby and got his arms around him you just had to stand there and wait for him to want to let him go because he had such a good grip on that child. There was no prying him off without hurting somebody. So I did have to keep my littlest man real close to keep him safe. And so it's kind of just evolved into him feeling like he has to be an organ in my body. Mm -hmm. So he does a lot of whining because I get off me, man, go play, go do something else. And so when I really just get to the end, I will just look at my oldest daughter and say, I'll be back. And I go outside and I will walk around the house. I will go out in the yard. I will stare at my sage and my hyssop. I will touch some mint leaves. I will look at the little dead nettle weed that's popping up all over the place. I will stand underneath the trees and say, Brother Tree, help me please. That's, you know, one of my tools for dealing with those really stressful moments. I just step outside, put my son in the face 
put my face <laughs> in the sun and you know breathe and take a minute you know I don't let, say that again i was gonna say you know it's a the sun has a very soothing and calming effect on us yes i love it yeah i do i literally will stand there turn my chin up close my eyes and just soak it in it feels so nice it's therapeutic it. it is oh my god it is i just I recognize that, hey, I'm going to go, woohoo, if I don't get out of here for just, you know, two or three minutes, five if it's really bad, and I'll go outside. Um, but, you know, taking a moment, you may not be able to go outside if it's raining or you just can't quite do it. Close yourself in your bathroom, closet. I mean, my oldest daughter, she likes to hide under her desk. She has <laughs> set up a little, a little tent. She's got blankets around it. So if you were to walk in the room, you wouldn't see her at all because she's tucked up underneath that desk. Sometimes she'll get under the bed and pull the blanket down so you can't really see. You know, so go somewhere and hide. Tell them you want to play hide and seek. And you're going to go hide and they can find you. Make sure you pick a good spot. That way you can get good time to yourself. You just sit there and breathe. You can sit there letting all manner of cuss words fly in your head so that they don't come out your mouth. Whatever it is that, you know, you need in that moment, take it. I know for me that that nature has has a huge effect on my mood and my attitude. And so last week I, you know, so I have a few places that are near me that are my happy places. And I just drove to the lake. Um, and I was only there for 15 minutes, but it was like I, I walked along the lake just a little bit, listening to the water, listening to the to the sound of the birds and just nature. And it was like, it was like my mind was just at ease. Mm -hmm. So everybody needs to find what it is that has that instant calming effect. Like I don't, I'm not one to take something um, over the counter, like some meds or something. Um, I rather just use nature and just other things at my disposal, like exercise, um, deep breathing, um, just other things like that. And I rather put those into action for calming techniques. And it tends to work for me. After I left that late, I've just been in a good mood. Like I haven't, I haven't been angry. Um, you know, you do have to be firm. So when you're facing different situations, you have to know what it is that you want just you can't just overlook stuff you have to face them head on but in while you're facing them head on you do need to be in a place of resolve within yourself so that you mm. don't fly off the handle so um so just you know for 15 minutes just go into a place where i see peace that represents peace and calmness to me just has meant just everything it's been a world of good I like that the lake has had a lasting effect. <laughs> it does. Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But when you say you don't take over the counter things, you got me thinking, right? So, you know, me and my plants, I'm like a community herbalist in my mind, but I'm not really because I have no training. I just read things and I try to pay attention to what I'm seeing the plants doing. But anyway, I have found personally that oat straw, I make an oat straw tea, a strong infusion actually. I let it sit overnight. I'll put some oat straw, same stuff that is your oatmeal, except it's not the, uh, it's the plant part. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. It's the green part. So the part that's growing up that looks like, kind of looks like wheat. There's milky oats. Those look a lot like a little wheat. And um, oat straw is literally like 
oat hay, but you can drop it into a mason jar, infusion pot, whatever your vessel is, and pour boiling water over it and let it sit for as long as you can. You can do it overnight, you can do it an hour or two, as long as you can, and then you drink it. It's very soothing. You may notice that you have a, a more calm outlook on things afterwards. I haven't tried this one yet, but they say that motherwort tincture is an excellent remedy for stress and anxiety. That's awesome. I bought some recently and I can't wait to use it. So I haven't used those, but just drinking tea in general helps oh, yeah. calm me because you, you pause and you take in the flavors. Yeah. So it's, it's a soothing experience to, for me to actually just sip, <laughs> you know, that's no, I like it simple, too. But, mm -hmm. but it works. Yeah. Sniff in the steam, some nice rose, a chamomile, lavender. Mm. Now I want a cup of tea. Yeah. So so we talked about um, delegating. We talked about removing yourself for a, and putting yourself in a quiet place. The next thing is to meditate. Um, one thing I try to do, I try to visualize the situation taken care of. I try to visualize an actual solution or resolve. And that way, I'm not just focusing on the problem. That sounds excellent to me. I, yeah. I guess that would be, it's just like what you do when you're setting intentions, if you're familiar with that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know that I've necessarily, well, yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Been there, but I like the meditating. I've, I don't have the time to do it like I want to. At one point, I was meditating every day. I have since gotten away from that. I should try to get back. Yeah. You know, there's all kinds of apps with the guided meditation. My favorite is Insight Timer. I could throw that in the show notes for you. But it's free. And usually, you get what you pay for. You use these little free apps, and it's kind of chinchy. <laughs> this one is not. There are some things that you can pay for, but you won't miss it if you do the free version. It has all kinds. I mean, there's stuff for the religious folk. There's stuff for the non-religious folk. There's music. There's um, little talks. There's, oh man, it's great. Inside Timer. Check it out. You just mentioned something that I think is great as well. Music. Music has a wondrous effect on a person's mm -hmm. mood. So I, I can't say in this particular situation, I think I, I, don't, I don't know if I put on music this week or not, but I know that music normally helps me. This week I've been more into audio books or podcasts and um, just listening to what I've been, the podcast I've been listening to more recently is um, Therapy for Black Girls. And oh, I like that one. I just, I mean, she's just been explaining stuff and her guests have soothing voices. And so while I was just going through my difficult time, just listening to other people just talk about different situations, just hearing it put into words, other situations, I just felt good. And so it helped me take take my mind off of my problems and just it refocused my thoughts. And so that's something that also can help if you're very stressed. And if you're teaching um, and you're, you know, doing the homeschool thing, the audio books are huge. I know that in the car when my kids had different classes, we definitely listened to different audio books. I like to check out the audio books at the library. And um, my husband has some that he that he has from um, what is it audio the one that Amazon does what is it called oh is that Audible Audible yeah <laughs> so so he has um, so he listens to he has some um, 
some books um, that are for the whole family. They're kid-friendly books that we've been listening to when we take um, family drives to different places. And so last week we were listening to a book together and that just has a, it has a soothing effect on all of us. And it, it's also reading time. So we use those type of opportunities to kind of kill two burns with one stone. So we're, we're having reading time. We are learning, listening to new thoughts, kind of literature, but yet we're calming ourselves and we're, you know, able to just, you know, go about our daily lives while listening as well. And so that was helpful. Let me get through this in. This is my last final tip. That was kind of a double action, but whatever. My final tip. Let school go. Just let it go. <laughs> Seriously. When things are going haywire and you can't just seem to pull it together, let school go. It's okay. One day, heck two days and not going to tear down all of the work and the progress that you have made. I can almost guarantee it. Sometimes you just have to let it go. You can come back to it. You know, you can, if you're uncomfortable with totally letting it go, just pare it down. We're only going to do one subject today or Let's make it a act, more active learning situation. We'll go to a museum or something else, you know? Do that so that you can reduce the strain that's going on inside of you. Because if you go down, what happens? Exactly. You got to just, I mean, if you just, if you let it go, they, of course, there'll be, it's like when we were kids back in school, snow day, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you just excited and you run around, no school, no school. It's okay. It is okay. Yeah. It's okay because it's about maintaining your sanity, your peace of mind and being able to function in the moment and tomorrow even right everything doesn't have to be so stringent and one of the beautiful things about teaching your own children is that you set the schedule so i mean you could be doing something at five o'clock in the morning eight o'clock at night while you're having lunch it doesn't matter when you do it, it all matters how you do it. And let's be real. If you're feeling like a rock is on your head, they can see that and they can feel that energy too. And it may not even create the type of environment that they're receptive to whatever the material is right you're absolutely right let it go okay so let it go is terrific <laughs> advice i just wanted to before we end the podcast i wanted to share um just a couple other things they're kind of related to some of the things that we said but exercise is huge you know mm -hmm. we talked about getting outdoors but taking a walk if you have you know a gym membership using that go into the gym. If you have, you know, exer exercise equipment at home, use it. Exercise um, boosts the endorphins and really is like a happy way. Like it helps you feel happier. And so um, running can also a happy reduce high as well. So there are other ways to just physically, you know, help your body maintain a better mood. And exercise is one of those ways. The other way is laughing. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> and I know one. like during this podcast, sometimes I just chuckle. That's because like laughter is awesome. <laughs> so. It is good medicine. Yeah. Very good. It, actually, exercise and laughter can help to reduce the levels of cortisol 
in your body. Cortisol is the stress hormone. And when you have too much of that built up, you can experience some very uncomfortable side effects, fatigue, mood swings, um, poor appetite, or choosing the wrong things to eat. So getting real deep, good laughter in and good exercise can help to eliminate some of that extra cortisol from all that stress. Excellent suggestion. And last but not least, I wanted to say, if you feel like life is just too overwhelming for you to handle on your own, use, um, if your um, health insurance gives you televisits, either, you know, set a set an appointment with your healthcare provider or utilize televisits. That's where you can um, talk to your doctor via some digital device or, you know, Skype or whatever program that they use so that you guys can see each other and discuss it. I think getting um, extra help is, it's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you need that um, in order to be the best self that you are for your kids. Um, if you want your kids to learn better, you also need to be in a good place yourself. And so we are proponents of taking care of all of you. So not just the physical, but the mental as well. And so that's how you learn how to cope with homeschool when you're facing extreme stress. Hold on, can I throw something in real quick? Sure. So when you were saying talk to your doctor, if that's not a possibility or you're uncomfortable with that, phone a friend. Yeah. <laughs> talk to someone, anyone, your mama, your daddy, your auntie, grandma, whoever you Trust. have a relationship with. Yeah. Talk to them. And even if they don't um, offer you any solutions or anything, it does excellent just to vent, let it out and you know, you can feel as though you're a little lighter or that you have put some of that energy out of you so that you can try to fill up with something more, more positive, something that's gonna help you move forward. All right. Sounds good. Well, that's all, folks. That's all we have today. We want you to share this podcast with a friend. Definitely uh, rate us if you're finding us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, or SoundCloud. Follow us. Rate us. Let other people know about our podcast. And we hope that you will visit the show notes page. The home blog is cleverlychanging.com. And if you look on the sidebar, you will see a podcast widget. Click on there and you will see other episodes as well. We appreciate you and we hope you will tune in in the next two weeks because our podcast is bi-weekly. All right. Have a wonderful week. Bye.